Autism is a neurological disorder that is evidenced by complex dis developmental dysfunction of the central nervous system. It is of a broad spectrum and it hinders the ability of the individual to communicate, interact socially, and behave. Autism is a faceless disorder and is usually not detected until several months after birth. It is known to affect more boys than girls, which tends to be, in which case it tends to be more severe. There are several instances in which a baby who had ordinarily developed appropriately um, skills such as babbling, looking at companions, smiling, reaching for objects, suddenly begins to drop the skills, especially in areas of eye contact and speech to retract into a world of their own, where they play alone and most of the time display forms of play, usually repetitive actions that include hopping, flapping the hands, spinning around, lining objects up, flicking switches, running around, and the likes. To date, autism can only be treated, that is, to teach the socially acceptable ways of be to, to behave, and there is no cure for autism yet, especially for the certain stereotypical behaviors. Inclusion, a culture of having a mixed collection of people with different orientation coming together to participate in activities together is advised. At inclusion, every individual is free to join their peers for learning or to work in an environment suitable for them with tools that accommodate their needs in order for them to achieve the same purpose. When appropriate inclusion is practiced, everybody's needs and rights matter. The atypical, whether living with autism or other disorders, is given a sense of belonging, has a voice and access to necessary resources that help them learn and develop in collaboration with their typical peers. The atypical individuals have the opportunity to learn appropriate behavior by immersion, and they tend to excel in the arts and areas with processes within structures. Inclusion presents a mutually beneficial opportunity for all, increasing the, op increasing the creativity, equipping with different ways to achieve a particular goal. It helps others develop empathy, respect, and pastoral care, and fosters the realization of the diverse orientation in people and broadens the scope of plans for the environment. Inclusion is instrumental in changing discriminatory behaviors, in building social relationships, and on the long run, a better community, society, and living. In a nutshell, on the long run, inclusion works for the typical as much, if not more than it does for the atypical. So I ask, why not inclusion? Because someone will tell you that they don't want their child to sit next to Absolutely. this <laughs> child that has ASD mm -hmm. because they are going to catch the ASD or the Down syndrome Absolutely. or cerebral palsy. Yeah. That's where education comes in, enlightenment. Yeah. The they are set in their ways. Enlighten the parents that is already set in their ways that I don't want my child sitting close to this boy. That you know what tends to happen, at least from my own experience, is that <clears throat> the children are usually the best advocates. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. Because the children have been informed mm -hmm. and they have also experienced it, we find that they tend to go home and tell the parents the appropriate things to do. And um, when for me, I, I believe that inclusion in the school is just the same as inclusion in the workplace mm. because it's the same kind of needs that we're trying to address and it's in getting the same goals, you know, so that at the end of the day, that person, whether they're a child or they're grown, mm -hmm. gets to have things that accommodate them, be in an environment where they feel respected and so they thrive. So we find that if a child can do it simply because they were educated. The information was broken down to them early enough, you know, and they also had the opportunity to experience it in bits. How much more with adults? Yes, adults are more set in their ways, but at the same time, what we find is that when you tell someone this is how it is, they will doubt you until you show it to them. Mm. But the moment you show them, then it becomes relatively difficult for them to, to counter or to continue. You will find the people who will continue to do those things. I mean, 
It's always yeah. going to be that way, but the greater part of the population will, you know, drop their arms and then they'll come to the table willing to learn because at the end of the day, everybody wants to be part of a success story. And they already see that this child who came in the other day couldn't make eye contact, couldn't sit down, couldn't do this, is now beginning to do those things. In addition to that, another way that um, inclusion can be promoted is by identifying whatever um, skills or anything at all that that particular individual is very good at, and you blow it up. So that the typical, the adults, everybody who is going on and on about them being contagious and not wanting yeah. to be around them, sees that, okay, so while this child is not sitting down the way I might want my child to sit and all of that, they're still able to do certain things that my child can learn. So with everything, you know, when you bring all of those to the table and more, then we tend to have them yeah. settling yeah, down. So, so, so we there know, are two, like, okay, yes. there, there are two, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry am I, am I going or you're going? What you said is very fantastic. But I feel like it also starts with the work culture or the school culture or all those things. Like, oh, definitely. Yes, because you did say, okay, the children is fantastic from them. But then I feel like even if the work culture or the work environment has not set a policy, so it still comes to if you don't have those kind of things, you know, enforced and green, it's just like how you come to the office, you say, this, this are. This is our own motto in this office. Oh, definitely. This is what we imbibe. This is our culture. So that, because you find that with adults, we're easy to toe that path when we have those structures in place. When they say, oh, in this place, we don't frown at this. This is our own. So it would help as adults, or like with children, when you know they, they, they are still able to imitate and it's easier to transfer those things and communicate those things without you putting those rigid structures to help to the path mm -hmm. yes. to quickly add to what you yes. what you just said my the center is an inclusive center the creative center right and we had gymnastics one day and the parent walked up to me and said oh i know a lot of parents that would like to join but because you have this other kids here mm -hmm. we cannot and i said oh it's okay we they don't have to. We are inclusive. Yeah, the well, thing about mean, inclusion, mean. okay, sometimes we actually haven't defined inclusion mm -hmm. properly. What is inclusion? Is inclusion taking this individual who's got autism or what other developmental needs and just plunking them into my environment and expecting them to behave and act mm -hmm. as I am? Mm -hmm. Or is it that I have a set of scenarios and rules that will meet truly meet that individual's need. Am I teaching them in the way that they're going to learn? Have I created the right environment for them to thrive in? That really is inclusion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that at the end of the day, parents are still going to buy in fully to what is being said, okay? And the flip side of the little caveat that you have, some of these individuals or the children that are on the spectrum, you have the ones that have very strong imitative skills. and they, sometimes you see it in echolalia, okay, when they are repeating exactly what mm -hmm. you see, or their imitation skills are so strong. And so maybe these parents have seen such children, and their concern then is that if I put you in this environment where I have all these others, you're going to pick it up. Different from those that think that by just sending you in here, sort of like, oh, you have malaria, and then I put you to sit beside the person, and you get, and you get malaria. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. So you're still going to have those set of people. So I think it's important for us to clearly demarcate and let people realize that it's not, it's not okay to exclude these individuals, individuals, our population, from these environments, but rather the other way around. And that the parents who genuinely has a concern, we shouldn't also brush them off very easily and say, oh, well, we're inclusive and this is who we are. Yes, it's who we are. But I think it's also an opportunity to educate, educate them. Educate, yes. So let's yes. don't miss out on those opportunities mm -hmm. to keep educating, educating the environment yes. in its entirety. Yes. Up next is Zussi. Stay with us. <laughs> 